Okay guys, welcome sa ECP411 and we will discuss big picture of focus ULOB, apply MS Excel functions and commands in auditing sales and accounts receivable transactions and balances. So the first one is the meta language or the terminologies that we're going to use here in the ULOB. So dalawa lang po yung terminology for natin. Uh, audit of sales. So, if you say audit of sales, so more on verification or examination of sales transactions. So, it may be validity and occurrence of sales. And sales are recorded in correct or proper accounting period. And sales are correctly computed. Next one is the audit of receivable. So, it is an examination of receivable transactions. So, more on its account balances. On existence, rights and obligation, completeness and valuation. So we will discuss or we will have a performance tasks about how to audit sales and receivables using MS Excel. So the first one here for the essential knowledge is the sales and receivable and or trade receivables. So there, these are two related accounts that can be audited simultaneously. So usually they are, yes, recorded simultaneously. Example for this is the sales on account. So you debit accounts receivable and you credit sales. In auditing, sales is more on checking or verification of validity and occurrence of the sales transaction and recorded in correct proper period or yung cut-off procedure, and sales are computed correctly. Then, accounts receivable naman, focus on existence, rights and obligations, completeness and valuation of the balances. Ayan. So, let's start with the sales audit validity, uh, validity test. Ayan. So, test if all customers are authorized to buy on account. So, open file. This one, the sales summary, and this was actually your activity, no? the less analyzed activity assessment in week 3 to 4, the ULOA. So, assuming it was already data scrub. Okay. So, like for example, this one. Okay. So, this was the, uh, the summary. Ito, summary before the data scrubbing. The sales summary before the data scrubbing. Then after it was data scrubbed, the data scrub or cleanse. Ayan. So ito po yung copy niya. Now what's, what you're going to do for 2.2 clicks summary copy, this one. And then, uh, wait lang guys. I think I have already, I, I want to delete this one before. Okay. Ayan. So, Segregate the cash sales and sales on account. Filter the type. And so yung type is yung B1, this one. And select invoice and credit memo only. So in this type or B1, click the drop down arrow and then uncheck the sales receipt. So only credit memo and invoice is merong or may yung merong check. Okay? Naka check box. So, click lang po okay. And then, copy the table and paste it to a new worksheet and rename the worksheet as sales on account. So, to copy this one first is control A. And then, or control A to highlight the entire table. And then, control C to copy the table. Then, create another worksheet for this one. And, rename the worksheet as sales on account. And paste here. Ayan. So, this is the uh, records for sales on account transaction. Okay. So, next one. 2.5 apply filter to row 1. Ito. So, here, apply filter. So, how to apply filter? Just click the home tab. And then, look for uh, sort and filter and click filter again so 2.6 insert column after column okay. so insert 
here after column A, so sa B. Then right click, then click insert. Rename this one B1 or in cell B1 type customer name. Okay. Ah, not name pala, type. Ayan, so medyo, ano ba nangyari sa iyo, sir? Okay. So, customer type. Then, using VLOOKUP function, in the customer type column, locate the customer type from the customer list worksheet. So, you're going to locate, based on the customer's name, the type of ito, transaction that the customer allowed or authorized. So, it may be credit or cash. So, let's check. So, let's use VLOOKUP. So, equals VLOOKUP. And then, the lookup value is the uh, customer name above Sheila, comma, the table array. Table array is the customer list here. Then, highlight the table from A to E37. And then, comma ole. Next one is the column index number. Or, in this case, what we're going to look for, so yung type. So, since the type is in what number ba column number? So, hindi siya dapat yung, uh, yung Excel or cell. Na, but the number. So, ilang number ba siya? Yung ikailang column ba siya? Ayan. So, ika, oh, 1, customer, 2, company, 3, active status, 4, type. So, 4, column. So, that's why 4. Comma, and then, make use of exact match. So, yung false. Then, close. So, as you can see, uh, it would not give you the result, but the formula. So, what you're going to do, just go to home, and then change this one. Ito, the format into general. Okay. So, go back here, edit this one, and then enter. So, pa, dyan uh, lalabas yung customer type. Okay. And then, copy the entire formula to the remaining cells. So, what you're going to do to copy, just click lang the lower right yeah, lower right of the box. Double click this one to copy the formula. But as you can see, it would give you an error. So, bakit siya naka-error is because nag-move yung table. Dapat yung table here in the formula, ito, this must be in absolute reference. So, to make it in absolute reference, this put a dollar sign. Or in our case, to make it a shortcut na lang po, click nila po yung F4. F4 and F4. So, dapat naka-dollar sign siya para hindi mag-move yung table. Then, and that. So, once again, copy the formula, double-click yung lower right. And you do have here the customer type. And then, for 2.5, filter the customer type and check if there are cash type customer. So, filter this one. So, pick yun lang po yung drop-down arrow. And then, look for cash. So, uncheck yung credit. And then, click OK. So, as you can see, merong cash dito na no? customer type. So, hindi siya allowed for credit, cash only. So, what you're going to do, click OK, and then, copy the result and paste it in separate worksheet and name the new worksheet as findings number 1. So, this is findings number 1. So, to copy this one, click first, Control A to highlight the entire table, and Control C to copy the table. And create another worksheet for this one. And paste here. Ayan. And then rename this one as findings number 1. Okay. So go back to sales on account. And worksheet and press alt dfs to show all hidden sales. So click this one. And then alt dfs. Okay. And for 2.13, fill the column B with any color you like to signify that you have conducted all the procedures in this column. So to do this, or do this every time you conduct another procedure. So, what you're going to do is you are to fill this one in col uh, with color. 
especially that uh, specifically to seek, uh, specify that you have conducted audit procedure for this column. So let's use yung yellow na lang. Okay. Ayan. So we're done with the first one, the validity test. The next one is the sales audit for cutoff test. So the objective for this one is to check if all transactions happen in the month of January 2017. So dapat January 2017 lang. So walang uh, lalapas sa January 2017. Or dapat walang February or March. Kasi yung cutoff niya is only January 1 or January 2017. So click sales and account once again. So this one. Insert column after column B. Okay. So this one. Click E and then right click here, insert. And then in E1, type month. And then using 3.3, uh, using text function, convert the date in column D to month format. So just type equals text. And then this is the value, comma, and then the format text, the uh, apat na M. No? Ayan. So, quotation mark, open quotation mark, apat na M, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then close quotation mark. Then close. Okay. And then, copy the function up to E190. So, to copy this one, just double-click the edge. And then, insert column after column E. So, after this one, right-click ulit, then insert. And then, in F1, type cut of month. So, this is cut off. Okay. So, using if functions, so 3.7, test if the month in column E is equal to January. If true, then type OK. If false, then that is a fine. Okay. So, what we're going to do, uh, let's use the if function. Equals if, and then the lot. Uh, logical test is this one, if this equals January. And then, comma, the value, if this is January, okay, walang problema. At comma ulit, value if it is false, so if it is false, or if it is not January, therefore it is E, find this. Then, close. Okay. And then copy the formula down to the last column. So double click yung lang yung X. Ayan. So don't forget to highlight these two row to specify that it is, this is actually an audit procedure. So click yung lang yung home and then fill this one with color yellow. Ayan. So 3.8 filter the cutoff month and check if there are findings. So here in column F, ayan. Click the drop down arrow and then check if there are findings. So, okay, no, walang findings. Just click lang, okay. So, if none, if there is none, proceed to the next procedure. So the next procedure here is the sales audit recomputation. So, we're done with ver uh, validity, the cutoff. The next one is the recomputation. So, the objective of this is to recompute the total CX. The same Excel pa rin. In cell L1, type amount per audit. So, L1. So, asan yung L1? Okay, so my last part. So, this is amount per audit. Okay. So, wrap text. Ayan. So, the next one. In cell L2, multiply I1 to cell J2. So, you are to multiply the quantity multiplied by the sales price. So, I'll just click. Okay. And then, what you're going to do next, copy the formula to the rest of the sales below. So, double click this one to copy the formula. And then, let's put here a comma sign. Para may comma sign siya. So, what you're going to do to put comma sign, just click home and then Click this one, comma sign. Sa may number, home tab, sa may number na part, then click ito. Comma sign. Ayan. 
And in cell M1, type amount is used. So M1 is after this one. Ito. So this is amount is used. So in cell M2, using exact function, compare the amount per record and amount per audit. So what you're going to do, make use of the exact function. So equals exact. So it checks whether two strings are exactly the same and results true or false. Exact is a sensitive. So exact. And then the text here is the amount per record, comma, and the amount per audit. And then close, enter. So true for the first one. Then copy the formula to the rest of the cells below. So double click the edge. And and then, don't forget to color yellow. So next one, filter. 4.7, filter the amount issue and check if there are false value. If the return is false, uh, it means that the amount per record is not the same as the amount per audit. So filter this one. So how to filter this one? Click the home tab again. And then look for sort and filter. And then click filter. So, matatanggal yung filter, no? Again, click ole home. And then, sort and filter ole. Then, click ole for filter. And let's look for false. So, ayan. And check nyo lang yung true. Para yung lalabas lang is yung false. Just click OK. So, ang dami-dami yan. Ang dami false. So, it means to say they are not exact. As to amount, no? they are not the same. So amount per record, like for this one, 460, but per audit should be 690. Ayan. So what you're going to do? Okay, we're done with this one. Create a new worksheet and copy and paste the result and name the new worksheet as findings number 2. So highlight the entire table, control A, and then copy, control C. Create another worksheet, so it's on plus sign sa baba. And then paste the table. Okay, so let's make it uh, adjust the width. And don't forget to rename this one as findings number two. Okay. So in findings number two naman, dito, type difference in cell M1. So this one. So type nyo dito difference. Okay. So, yung difference is yung difference na amount per audit or should be versus the amount per record. So, meron siyang difference first sa 230. And then, uh, copy the formula. Ayan. So, pulang siya lang space. Ayan. And then, don't forget the color. Ayan. So, these are difference. Ayan. Okay, so we're done with the findings number two. The next one is the sales audit using gap analysis. So the objective of this is to check if there are gaps between invoice numbers. So this is actually to check or to verify completeness assertion. Na, if complete ba yung series number ng company. So 5.1, go to sales on account worksheet, the same Excel. So sales on account, this one. And then press Alt DFS. So Alt DFS to uh, show all hidden cells. And then highlight the entire table. To highlight the entire table, just click here, Control A. And then 5.4, click Insert Pivot Table, then click OK. So insert. Dito. Then Pivot Table. Then click nyo lang ako. Ayan. So to summarize all invoice number, drag the field num into rows box. So yung field num, asan yung uh, field num, ah, uh, num. Yung num. Ayan. So yung number dito. Drag nyo daw ito sa row box. So dito. Hindi ko siya madrag. Let's maximize this one. So this num, Click nyo lang, and then press hold. And then, 
put here in row field. That's right. So, ito na siya. Okay. So, copy cell A4 to A48 and paste it in cell A2. And of a new worksheet, then name the new cell as gap analysis. Okay. So, copy this one. And then, create another sheet. Then, paste it in A2. And don't forget to rename this one as gap analysis. So in cell B3, and to B46, enter formula A3 minus A2. So you are to deduct this one from this one. So it should be, or it should have a difference of 1. And so... The idea here, if the result is more than 1, the gap between two invoices has exist. So, merong, baka merong lost na, na invoice number. So, double-click this one to copy and look for 2. So, wala siyang 2 na. So, wala siyang more than 1. So, 5.8, check if there are more than 1 results. So, okay, walang problema. So, just save this one. And let's proceed to number 6. Summarize sales on a per audit. So to summarize this one, go back to pivot table you created from the previous step. Okay. This one, yung sheet number 6. And rename this one as sales on account summary. So dito. So sales on account summary. Okay. And drag the customer name field to row box and place it at the top of num field. Lastly, drag the amount per audit field in the values box. So, drag na naman. Let's maximize this one. So, customer name here in the row. Ayan, before the num. And then the amount per audit, ito. Drag nyo ito here in the values. Uh, so, it, here is the result, so the summary of or the sales on account summary per customer. So highlight B and click home comma style. So lagyan natin ng comma. So that's one. And then how to click, how to make this in or put it comma sign. So click lang po yung home and then click nyo itong comma style. Okay. Okay. So, we're done. So, ano pa ba? Wala na. To save your work. And I think we're done with the sales audit. Ayan. So, we're done with the validity test. Yung kanina. Ayan. For findings number one. Ito. For findings number two. For the accuracy. Ayan. And the gap analysis. And lastly, we created also a CEO's on account salmon. Ayan. So the next one here is receivables or the cut of this. So check if no transactions after March was included. So let's open another file, Excel file AR summary. Excel. So AR summary, I think I have already opened this one. Ito. AR summary. Ayan. So, what's next? So, I should make this one. Ayan. And then the work. Okay. So, create a copy of AR Summary Worksheet. And then, click AR Summary to Worksheet and insert column after column B. So, create muna ng copy. So, how to click copy, air summary, right click for this one, and then click move or copy. And then click air summary, then check the create or copy, and click OK. So, again, click air summary to worksheet, and insert column after column B. So, here. So, insert this one. So, C, right click, and then insert. So, in cell C1, type cut off this. So, cut off. 
markets. Ayan. And using if function, check if the invoice date is beyond March 31, 2017 or not. So in sales E2, type the formula shown below and copy and paste to the rest of the sales below. So copy the formula, this one. So if, so the logical test is this one. If it is more than, ayan, more than the date as specified here, which is March 31, 2017. So date and the year is 2017, comma March and then 30. So if it is true, so this is beyond. I say more than, diba? More than siya. If more than siya, this is beyond. And then if it is oh, uh, false, no? okay lang. So which is within the limit or within the date. Then close. So this is the formula. Then click, click nyo lang, enter. And don't forget to copy the formula to the rest of the set. Double click nyo lang yung edge. And don't forget to color yellow. Ayan. So check if there are days false beyond March 31, 2017 by filtering the cutoff test field and select only values that contains beyond. So let's check. No? Click nyo lang po yung drop down arrow and then, okay, meron beyond. So uncheck OK para yung maiwan na lang is the beyond. Then click OK. So as you can see, meron siya beyond cutoff test. So what they're going to do Remove the two rows that contains the date beyond March 31, 2017. And then unhide the whole table. So, hindi pala sa findings in this case na. Okay. So, pwede rin actually siya findings na ba? Let's follow na lang this hint. So, highlight this one. And delete. So, right click. Then delete row. And alt DFS to show all the hidden cells. Okay, so we're done. Next one is receivables audit, aging of receivables. So, gagawa tayo ng aging schedule. Direct even the age of the accounts receivable. The same Excel worksheet, insert column after column C. So, this one. And then, in cell D1, type age. So, type nyo lang age. And in cell D2, get the difference between the date of invoice and the cutoff date of which is March 31, 2017. To get the difference between the two dates, type the formula shown below and copy and paste the formula to the rest of the cells below. So, date, this one, equals date, 2017 and March and then 31 and minus the, this one. Okay, then click or press enter. So, as you can see, the data format is in date so, what they're going to do, change this one into general format. So, ito yun siya. So, how to change this one in general format? So, click lang po yung home tab. And then, as you can see here, dito sa may number na part, na, naka-date format siya. So, what they're going to do, change this one into general. Okay? So, ayan. And copy the formula to the rest of the set. So, double-click lang yung edge. Ayan. So, insert naman another column after column D. So, this one. Insert here. And then, rename or insert E1 type ARAG. So, ARAG. So, using your function, evaluate if the receivable is 30 days unpaid, 60 days unpaid, 90 days unpaid, or more than 90 days unpaid. So, type the formula shown below in cell C, uh, E2. Okay. So, here, type nyo lang equals if and then the logical test is this one d2 then if this is less than or equal to 30 so this is 0 to uh, 30 days okay so if this is false so meron sa if statement na naman na. so if so if the d2 is less than or equal to 60 so, syempre, that is 31 to 
60 days. And another if, if D2 is less than or equal to 90, so that is 61 to 90 days. And lastly, the last one is if all of these are false, no? so more than 90 days. Okay. Ayan. So copy the formula to the rest of the sets. So double click this one. Ayan. Okay. So what they're going to do is to sort mo na siya. Yung by group na na. 31 to 60, 61 to 9, uh, 0 to 30, 31 to 60 days, 9, uh, 61 to 90, and more than 90 days. So, what you're going to do, 8.9, highlight the whole table. So, highlight this one. Control A lang po, no? To highlight the entire table. And click insert and pivot table ulit. Then click OK. So, click insert. And then pivot table. Then click OK. And in pivot table, drag the customer name field in rows box. And then drag the ARAG field in column box. And lastly, uh, drag the amount field into values box. So, how to drag this one? Let's maximize muna. Okay. So, customer name in row. And yung column naman is yung ARAG. And the amount is in values. So, ayan. So, nakagroup na siya according to 0 to 30, 30 days. 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and more than 90 days. So, what's next? Apply comma style. I'm watching that uh, pivot table. So, highlight nyo lang yung B to F. And then, click home. And then, click yung comma style. Okay. And, name the new worksheet as AG. And save your work. So, this is AG. So, this is how to prepare an AG schedule using the pivot table. Okay. Next one is receivables audit pa rin, but overdue. So determine the specific overdue invoices and compare the each receivable credit term and do this or to do this, follow the following steps. The same as previous, go to ER summary 2 worksheet, insert three columns after column. So ER summary 2, this one. Then insert columns after column, three columns. Ayan. And then uh, in cell F1, G1, and H1, type the following. So, term, term 2, and overdue. So, term. And this is term 2. And this is overdue. Okay. So, using VLOOKUP, a function locate the term from the customer list. And in cell F2, type the function as shown below and copy and paste the formula to the rest of the cells below. So, Let's try to look for the term for customer name. So in this case, Abo Sheila. And the, uh, as shown in the customer list. So equals VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP. So the lookup value is Abo Sheila, comma. Table array is the customer list. So click me lang po itong customer list. And then, highlight the table. This one, from A22. F40. And come on, let. And let's look for the term. The term is in F, no? Letter F. So, ilang column ba siya? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6. Comma, and then false. Close. So, ayan. So, meron siyang net 60. They copy the formula to the rest of the cells below. So, double click yung edge. So, as you can see, mag-error siya. So, ano yung problem natin? Hindi naka-absolute value yung table. So, balik po natin dito. Double click. And make the table in absolute reference. Kasi nga, this is fixed yung table. So, click this one. Then, F4. Then, F4 ulit. And then, double click ulit to copy the formula. So, next one. Using right function, extract the numerical values from the term. In cell G2, which is term 2, no? 
type the formula shown below, then copy and paste the formula to the rest of the cells below. So, in this one, extract natin yung 60, yung value. So, it was right. No? And then, this is the text. So, ilang characters ba? So, dalawa lang, no? 6, 0. So, 2 lang. Then, close, then, enter. So, since the values in the column G is in text format, so there is a need to convert it to value or number format so that we can use it to the next procedure. So, just add value in a word function to the function you created in the preceding steps. So, add nyo lang po itong value here before the right function. So, value. And close. So, ayan, naka-value na sa yung format. So, copy the formula to the rest of the cells below. Double click this one. And using a function determines the invoice is long overdue and how many days it is overdue. And in cell H2, type the function below, then copy the paste the rest out of the rest of the cells. So, this one. Click nyo lang po ito. And then, equals if. So, the logical test here is here to compare the age and the term. And so, yung G2 here, if this is greater than uh, B2, this one, comma, okay. So, th that is over June. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to get the difference between the two. So, D2. Uh, minus G2. So, ilang days ba siya overdue? Otherwise, pag hindi siya overdue, okay lang. Then, close. Ayan. So, double click this one to copy the formula to the rest of these cells below. And, ayan. So, meron siya explanation dito, no? So, if the age account receivable is less than the credit term, then the receivable is not overdue. So, okay lang. Otherwise, the function will compute the number of dates it is overdue. So, for example, this one, 49 versus 60, okay lang. So, within 60 lang siya. While, for this case, 43 siya. But, it should be 30 days only. So, meron, overdue siya. And, meron siyang difference na 30 days. Okay. So, filter the overdue field and show only those overdue invoices by unchecking the OK value. So, filter this one. And uncheck the OK. Para yung lalabas yung merong difference. Just click OK. Ayan, so dami nila. Na. And then, copy the result and paste it to a new worksheet. Name the new worksheet as findings number 2. So, Ctrl A. To, uh, to highlight the entire table, then Ctrl C to copy the table. Then create another worksheet for this one. Then paste here. Uh, paste it here. Then, let's make it in keep source column width. Ayan. And then, run in this one as find this number. Okay. Then, 9.11, get the total amount of overdue accounts. So, total mo lang ito. So, what you're going to do equals sum. So, I like this one. Okay, so what you're going to do, make this and, and this is the total. Okay, so what's next? Receivables audit, credit, uh, credit limit, limit, ayan din ako makabalo guys, so limit test. So, check if the payment is enforcing controls or reducing the possibility of non-payment for a customer. So, test if the balances of the customer is within the credit limit. So, use the same worksheet as previous. So, go back to AR summary 2. Show all hidden records in this one. So, alt BFS. And highlight the whole table. And then, insert a pivot table. Insert. Uh, pivot table, then click OK. So, in the new worksheet, drag customer name, field to rows, box, and amount field in values, box. So, customer name in row, and amount in values, box. 
Okay. So this procedure will summarize the balances of all customer. And then add new sheet number and rename it uh, to credit uh, credit limit test. Ayan. So create another sheet, then rename this one as credit limit test. Okay. So copy the amounts here. So from Sheila down to this one, then paste it here. Okay, so what's next? So apply comma style. Ah, lagyan mo pala ng ano na customer name. And cell A1 and balance in B1. This is customer name. And this is balance. Again. And apply comma style to columns B, C, and D. So B, C, and D, comma style, home, and then comma style. Again. So in cells you want type cred uh, credit limit. Ito. So credit limit Ayan. and then locate the credit limit of each customer from the customer list and enter the functions as shown in cell C2 so in cell C2 again we look up if you're going to look for the amount no? Ito, so lookup value is C above Sheila or the customer name comma the table array is the customers list table and then, so, sa ilang column ba, o ika ilang column ba yung limit? So, ika 5, no? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5. And then, comma, false. So, this is now the formula. So, we look at A2, comma, customer list. And then, F5, and then, ah, 5, and then false. So, don't forget to make this in absolute reference. No? This one. And then copy the formula. Okay. And then in cell D1, type limit test. So this is limit test. Ayan. So check if the customer balance is greater than the credit limit. So in cell D2, enter the formula below. So using, again, the if function. So equals if. And then the logical test is that if B1 less than uh, minus C2, okay, again, again, if B2 minus C2 is less than or equals to 0, so walang problema. Kasi uh, negative siya, no, kumbaga mas malaki ng credit limit kaysa sa balance. So, okay siya, within the credit limit siya. So, click okay, or okay lang siya. Then, come on, let otherwise that is findings. Kasi beyond sa credit, credit limit. Alright. Then close. Then end time. Ayan. So if the return value is okay, then customer balance is less than or equal to the credit limit. Otherwise, it is a findings and that need to be resolved with the process owner. So copy and paste the formula to the rest of the CS. Dito. And then, click data and apply filter. Okay. So, click nyo lang po ito. Sa D1, then data, and then filter. Okay. Then, filter the limit test field and show only the customer with findings. So, sort this one. So, click the drop down list below. And then, click the find, uh, OK. Now, uncheck mo lang yung OK para yung findings yung Matipira. Then click OK. And copy the result of and paste to a new worksheet. Name the new worksheet as findings for. Then save your work. So copy this one. Control A. Then Control C. Create another uh, worksheet. Then paste this one. Okay. Lagyan natin ng space. And syempre, this is findings number 
Okay. So, thank you po for your time, for listening. And this is our sources po na. So, from Mr. William. So, okay. Thank you po. Goodbye and God bless.